Hi everybody, my name is Rob Scott from UC Today and in this session I'm joined by Craig Decker, Managing Director for Cisco. And today we're going to be talking about the importance of technology and partnerships for business resiliency. It's a really crucial conversation, Craig. So I thought the maybe the best place to start would be just to kind of talk around, you know, what does it actually take for business to be resilient, you know, nowadays? You know, what, what does it take to be resilient in 2020, for example? Yeah, no, Rob, it's a great question. And I, I think it's top of mind for all business leaders right now. They've They've had to solve business continuity. They've, they've taken their workforce and had to move them totally to work from home. Most are now starting to, as you and I were chatting before, we're starting to think about maybe having some people back into offices, but they've got all of these different challenges. And so I think what, when we talk about this, this period right now, business resilience is about understanding what's changed, what's good, what's bad, what do they need to do to get the very best from their employees? What's the right way to communicate with their customers? And so the business resiliency is nearly tearing up the playbook that they had in terms of how they ran their business before the pandemic and looking at what are the changes that they're going to make to embrace the, the different work from home environment that they may have now, to embrace the different marketplace they could be in. You know, in a lot of cases, I think some companies have done really well during this period because they solved a greater connectivity with their customers. Um, other organizations are now just going back trying to work it out. So for me, business resiliency is, first of all, that, that tough admission that it's probably not ever going back to the way it was and having to go, okay, what, how, what and how do we change our organization for this new future? Um, and I um, wrote some stuff recently talking about rarely do businesses ever want to go through transformation. They like transitional change rather than transformational change. Nearly every company I know is in the midst of transformational change, that jump to the new normal, which is where the resiliency will come in. And I think the companies that embrace the fact that they have to change, change quickly, that most importantly, that every one of their employees is going through this challenging period. Every one of their customers is going through this challenging period. Every one of their suppliers is. And understanding how do they create the right ecosystem, the right employee nurture, the right um, values in this new, new world that we're facing. Um, and so I think resiliency is just that next step. We got continuity going, everybody worked out what to do. Now it's time for businesses to be honest about what's the good and bad from this, what have they learned, and how do they implement that within their business environment? So just to reflect on what has happened this year in 2020, because I don't think many of us expected this to happen, um, but what stages do you think businesses have been through? And, and you know, when we do reflect on those stages, and granted, we're not out yet, uh, we're still, you know, June, 2020 um but what can we learn from those stages so far so i think we we started off as businesses having to solve continuity when we had to change our work environments you know how many people now are working from home and within that work from home environment we had to also change what we expected of people i, I have team members now where you'll see their children wander through or there'll be the sound of a barking dog. It's, you just, you have to accept that that's part of the work environment. Equally, in a lot of cases, we, we literally haven't seen anybody face to face now for three, four, five months. So you, you are having to learn how to engage with your team, with your customers, with your suppliers using video like this. And it's a different experience. We've all sat there and I, I still have some people, I won't do it to you, where they're talking to you and you're viewing the side of their head. So their camera is somewhere over here. And that's just people having to adapt to the way this new world works. So I think we, we all have embraced that change and employers and vendors like us scrambled to make sure that the capacity went there. Um, I was chatting to a, a colleague within the service provider industry about how well they feel they've done over this last four months, the amount of capacity increases that have gone on in the last four months in the internet backbone, in the hosting world, in the things like us for WebEx, it's just astronomical, unheard of in terms of the capacity ads. 
So we've all got through that initial period of changing where we work from. But I think, you know, and to your earlier question about resilience, that was an, an, an enforced environment. And I think people hoped that they would be back and the, the, it would have just gone up and down. And I think we're all embracing the fact that's not happening. And the whole of travel and our work environments is changing. And so within that now, companies are having to embrace, you know, what is our, our work environment? How many offices do we need? What is the right training now to really empower those people? How many people have the right equipment to work from home? What's the right investments to be made there? And then you've got the institutionalization. Employees were used to working in one way. How do we train them? How do we help them with a work environment from home? And, and I run a, a, a small team of a couple of hundred people, but how do you engage your team globally and have them feel part of a team, I think is gonna be one of the real challenges. And as you go up, that, that creation of the feeling of being part of something in a team, when we are now really so remote, will be a, a key leadership requirement as we move forward. And I think we're going to reach a, a period um, towards the back end of this year where we'll see the winners and losers from that. We'll see the groups that saw this as an opportunity, embraced the fact that there was change, actually really rode that change and have a stronger interaction with their um, customers and their suppliers and their employees. And they've come out of it and, and will be the template for that. I won't say new business, but the business success stories from the pandemic. And then there'll be groups that that really won't do enough. And, you know, sadly, I think they're going to have real challenges because I don't think this is going away. And I do think it creates a new economic as, as well. A lot of companies won't have as much real estate cost. They won't have as much travel cost. So there, there'll be an ability to have possibly more free cash to invest, but certainly more profitability to look at, you know, how they grow their businesses, how they grow their market. So I, I think we've got through continuity, thankfully. Um, and I think we're in that period now of transformational change, companies having to go, you know, and it's everything, it's manufacturing, it's sales, it's support, it's HR, it's finance. How do they all now readapt to work within this new environment. And then, as I said, sadly, I think what we'll see towards the end of the year are the winners and losers from that. Um, and it's quite interesting because I don't think we've seen a period of change like this, um, in, at least in my lifetime. And so there will be some companies that will really be impacted by this, that will have to rebuild themselves. Um, equally, there'll be some, some companies that just come out of nowhere. So it's gonna be an exciting period. Um, I think the last point I'd like to make on, on that is I don't think any of us know whether that timeline is right or wrong. So my reflections are, that's my view of, of time. You know, we literally could be seeing some of that occurring at the end of the summer. Um, I think equally, I think that there'll be some companies that will look like they're quite okay from the pandemic and it'll be two or three years on before the true impacts are felt and you see them decline off. So, so I do think that time's gonna be a little bit elastic over the coming period in terms of when certain markets or certain companies are affected by this. Yeah, that's a really interesting perspective. And you know, I completely agree with those points that you've made there. And, and just, just, you've mentioned it already, uh, but let's just focus in a little bit more around the kind of business resiliency uh, and, and planning element of this. So you know, what advice would you give to you know, business leaders look, looking at the future now and the kind of looking to plan for business resiliency? I know we, the title of this session, we, we talked about technology and partnerships. But, you know, how, do you, how do you pull all that together into a plan? All right, don't forget the people. <laughs> a piece of advice I will give coming from a technology company is don't forget the people. And your workforce are going to be capable of accepting change and go on this journey at different rates. And when a company believes that they're gonna be able to take everybody from here to here in one step and they're all that way, that's when they're gonna fail. I think it's going to be about remembering this is impacting people in different ways. 
people's work environments um, now feel very different for them. People are sometimes struggling with feeling like they're engaged or part of a team. And so to create business resilience, we need our teams, we need our employees to feel part of a company, to feel like they're making a difference, to feel like they're valued. And that's sometimes hard within this new work environment. And so, you know, the technology, business continuity in a lot of cases was, was about the technology. Can I get you to work from home? Business resilience will be a lot about the people. Can I empower you? Can I help you through whatever work challenges that you have working from home or working from wherever your work environment is? How am I going to help you when we do ask you to come back into the office and there's a real trepidation to facing up to public transport or a work environment? And what are, what are the new rules? You know, having been into London, the amount of masks you, you see people wearing, it's great, right? It's, it's part of the new normal, but that's again a, a major change. And I didn't go on the subway. I chose to drive because I chose that to be a much safer environment. Everybody's gonna have their own different levels of coming back into this, and they're going to have had different challenges. And then we've got all of the technology. Lots of people have now got a lot more technology to enable their work than they used to in their environment, and they don't have an IT department. So I know lots of people that, that are challenged by that. And again, we've got to work out how do we help them. So my business resilience for me is about companies remembering their greatest asset is their people. And this is a period when those employees are going through any number of, of challenges from all of the changes. And it's about making sure that the right programs, the right training, the right nurture, the right understanding of institutional change is put into place so that when you come out of it, you come out of it with a stronger team capable of helping you drive the business forward. And I think that's a real shift because continuity was so much about technology and it was forced upon us by governments that said you cannot go to work. Now as businesses, it's all about the people. And I think that is what everybody has to remember. It's the technology is an enabler for the people. We've got to make sure the employees feel part of the company, feel like they're capable of working from home, have the right tools, capabilities, have the right training, but absolutely have the right support. Great. And how do partnerships work into this? So could you expand on that for us? Yeah, look, I think that at the moment, lots of organisations are looking at how do they create this transformational change? What's the right office set up? What's the right work from home set up? How do they create the right training programs? And I think lots of organisations are out there looking at it going now, realising, right, I need a, a base I need some technology suppliers. As I said, working for Cisco, it's been a real focus area for us to make sure that we're enabling people with the right technology. But I continue to work with groups that are doing training on how you should work with video, how to manage virtual teams great um, in a more um, conducive and team manner. You know, Cisco has a huge focus on team dynamics and, and team leadership and, and teamwork. Um, and I think lots of organizations will need to create partnerships and work with you know, vendors, consultants, groups that can help them with that. And as I said, you've got to remember everybody is at a different point within their, their coping with the new work environment, actually just coping with some of the scariness of the pandemic. And so you've also look at, you know, what are the right groups for you or HR organization to be engaging with and creating that right openness and ability for people to feel like they've got a voice and nurture. Um, so for me, businesses right now have an even greater need for the right partnerships to help them through this transformational change than ever before. Because as I said, the, the real, and again, you said it at the beginning of this, we didn't really expect this. So, you know, nobody really had a plan. And now we're in the midst of some quite significant change. Everybody's going to have to realize that they probably can't do it on their own. And for me, that's what the partnerships are about, Rob. It's about embracing the fact we are on transformational change. We can't stop it. It's not going back to normal. Right. How do I look at all aspects of my business? How do I look at the different things I need to be doing to make this a great company? 
and then investing in them and having the right partnerships to help in that. And a lot of them will be soft skills. It'll be training. It'll be HR augmentation to support people through these different periods. It could even be a lot of the, the right type of training programs to have people feel comfortable working in their new work environments at home and how to manage the time and the, the stresses. It's still common for one of my children to come in and work out. I'm glad they haven't turned up for this interview, but it's not uncommon for one to come in and say hello. And so that's sort of just the, the new world and it brings a whole set of new dynamics. And that's where I think companies need to create the right partnerships to help them through that period. And again, always remembering about how do you bring the employee experience because that then creates the customer experience that creates the, you know, your productivity. And so getting that employee experience front and center within a, a lot of this is really important. Great stuff. Thanks, Craig. It's really interesting speaking to you today. In terms of you know, finding out more, what's the best way for anyone you know, interested in, in looking at business resiliency and what they can do to help uh, their business go forward? Yeah, no, Rob, we've got a lot of content on our um, website, cisco.com. Um, if you look up business resiliency or workplace transformation, we've been running uh, webinars and creating content in this space for, for many years now. Um, again, uh, I think a lot of what people should also look at is a lot of the groups that we're also promoting that can help out with some of those soft and HR environments. But again, it will all be on that Cisco.com site. Great stuff. So, hey, it's been great seeing you again today, Craig. Uh, thanks for sharing some great insights with us today. Um, thanks to everyone for watching. Uh, if you've enjoyed today's session, please do give us a quick like or a share on social media. It's always appreciated. But for now, thanks for watching.